Hey everybody, it's Galmadex, and welcome back to another premiere draft of Kaldheim. In today's draft, we're probably going to start off with Svela here. This is basically a mythic uncommon. This card is very, very powerful in the snow decks. 3 mana for a 2-4, spend 3, get an icy manolith, and then the really powerful card of this. For 8 mana, you can tap this, look at the top 4 cards of your library, cast any spell among them without paying its mana cost, and put the rest on bottom. So this is kind of just an uncommon version of uh, Golos, that really good like 5 color bomb uh, back in one of the core sets. Um, so yeah, I mean this is just a really really strong card, probably the strongest card in the pack. None of our commons are fantastic, I guess Augury Raven's a pretty solid flyer in blue, Eyesight Troll's good in the, the heavy snow decks, but... Nothing super stunning there. Our rare is just a dual land that is actually worse than the common dual lands in the set. I think you would prefer just the ones that tap for snow mana generally. Um, and our uncommons outside of Svela, not super great. Although Bloodline Pretender can usually be pretty good. There are a lot of tribal synergies in the set. So we're going to start off with a Svela here. And taking a Svela means that we are definitely trying to push into any kind of red-green deck in any kind of super multicolored snow deck, Svela will work well, but you don't need snow for Svela to work. Svela works all by herself, uh, just with her own abilities working into each other, and she doesn't require any snow anywhere, so we could just be any kind of, uh, of green or red deck here. So after taking Svela, we could take Carter Doom Scourge and try to do some kind of Jun strategy. Svela does make mana lists, so Svela helps mana fix. And uh, if we try to have green be our core color, we could be splashing a lot of stuff. So Carter is a really powerful card that could be a pick here. Uh, if we want to take something just to go with Svela, Ice Side Troll is going to be great in a snow deck. Snow Covered Mountain to just grab the snow lands if we want to push into a snow deck. And uh, Sculptor of Winter, I think I would take after Ice Side Troll and after the Snow Covered Mountain, but this is also solid in those snow decks. Kind of want to just take Ice Side Troll, I think. Um, just stick to Svela for sure. Uh, Carter is pretty powerful. But I don't really want to immediately just decide I want to try to do some kind of three color splashy thing. We'll just stay in two colors for now. Um, take any like snow dual lands pretty highly so maybe we can do that kind of stuff. I do love me a Basalt Ravager. I think I'm going to scoop that up here. Uh, although if this were like a red green snow duel, any green based snow duel, like green blue, green white, anything like that, I think I'd scoop that up in here now that we have an Ice Hide Troll we could try to definitely push into the snow strategy. Um, but seeing as it's just a black snow source, I think I'm cool just taking Basalt Ravager here. So far, we do have two troll warriors, so if we get any amount of warriors or any amount of trolls, uh, we've already got one creature type we're working towards with Ravager, and you don't even need any really uh, for this to be okay. Sometimes it just comes in and shoots a Ferocious Pup or a 1-1 one -one token uh, just all by itself. Now, what do we have? We do have a green snow land, very tempted to pick that up. However, we're not seeing really any green cards in this pack. That is a bad sign, but it could also mean the pack just didn't have much green. There's a Berg Strider for blue snow, but I think if we're pushing into other colors with our snow stuff, we probably need to be taking the lands here, because with Svela, we're trying really hard not to abandon green here. Like, if we take Berg Strider, then... And we don't get enough, like, snow sources and stuff. We'll have to abandon Troll and Svela and just be, like, blue-red giants. Actually, <laughs> now that I put it that way, I mean, blue-red giants is a good strategy to be in. There's multiple good blue cards here. Bergstrider and Inga Runai still in this pack. Raven form serviceable. Yeah, you know, I actually do like Bergstrider here because it's going to go well into a snow deck if we do end up, like team or snow and it's going to go great in blue red giants too and we could get pushed out of green here and into just like blue red now what do we have horizon seeker for grabbing those lands off the boast ice tunnel for a snow land augury raven just as a good blue creature i think the best non-land card here is probably just the augury raven so i kind of want to just take ice tunnel here Again, it doesn't have green in it, which makes me less excited, but it is still a snow source. We've got the Ice Side Troll, we've got Berg Strider as well now. Do want to take those snow lands pretty highly. Now we've got Snow Covered Forest. That is going to be pretty much the number one snow land you want to take in a green snow deck. Just an untapped snow source that also taps for your green. And the rest of this pack is not very exciting for us. White and black being the most 
represented colors. Even in those colors, nothing super great. Shieldmate, pretty good in aggro. Same with Braggart, good at the top end, and you're all being fine. Carful Kennel Master, fine at the top end. We could put a little bit of consideration towards the uh, the non-basic land there, but that was the blue-black one, so that's pretty far from what we're doing here. I think we can take the Notvold Slumber Mound. Green-red, we would like green to be our most played color here. And this does require double green. We do have two red cards already, two green cards. Seems pretty on color, and it's a great sacrifice land. Just a land that gives you value in the late game if you get flooded out. You get a 4-4 Troll Warrior and destroy somebody's land. So I like that a little bit more than the 5-mana uh, five 5-5, five, five, although that card is fine as well. Uh, as is Pilfering Hawk, that card's actually okay in snow. Now, Snow-Covered Plains, the worst snow land, because uh, you're very, very rare to have white cards that care about snow. Don't love the green cards. We have Not Vold Recluse, which is a pretty mediocre creature, and Herald's Revenge, which is a really mediocre removal spell. Because you're not really choosing what you're removing. Your opponent just has to block with something. Breakneck Berserker is not really good in a slower, more mid rangey kind of deck, which is definitely what we're leaning towards. Maybe I just take Bind the Monster here. Like, we'd run it if we do end up like Blue Red Giants or something. We could run it in, like, Teamer Snow as well. Pretty happy to just take another Ice Hide Troll here. Not really missing much else. Just the Port of Carfell, which does require double black. Pretty far from our colors. Snow-Covered Mountain is a really nice pickup here, pick 10. We do want to get those snow sources at the ready now that we have double Ice Hide Troll and one Berg Strider. Lots of uh, cards that care about snow already. Here we have Frost Peak Yeti, maybe. This card is, is very mediocre to me most of the time, although it's the closest to what we're doing, unless we're taking Vault Robber again, because that's just an okay early drop for Blue Red Giants. Just scoop up the Yeti, I guess. Now we can take Seize the Spoils. Helps us splash stuff with the treasure tokens if we try to be a very multicolor deck here. Arachnoform, Grim Jogger, and Strategic Planning. Don't really like any of these. Don't have any black cards yet, and Draugr's pretty mediocre, so I guess I'll take the blue draw spell. Now we have Broken Wings and Kettle Master, again, just because black is not super likely here. We're going to take a Broken Wings, which is main deckable, being able to destroy an artifact, enchantment, or flying creature. One of those is relevant most of the time. Spirit of the Aldergard is a pretty nice pickup here, but wow, this pack is loaded. I'm not actually sure if Spirit of the Aldergard is the pick. This is, uh, this is a difficult one. I think I am going to go with the Spirit. This is a threat on its own, like a game-winning threat that also fixes your mana and gets you another snow source and snow permanent. So just a really, really solid card in a snow deck. But there's also Arnie Slays the Troll, which is in our colors. We are red-green, uh, red-green-blue here. So fight a creature, make one of your creatures bigger, and gain some life. Just does a lot for the mana cost over the course of a few turns. But then there's also Demon Bolt, which is just really efficient, great removal. That's always going to kill something, and uh, quite often will kill just your opponent's best creature, because the creatures in this format don't tend to get very large. I'm going to take the Spirit of the Alder Guard here, but I genuinely don't know if that's correct uh, in that in that pick. So here we are playing the kind of deck that could make use of Frost Augur. Look at the top card of your library. If it's snow, reveal it, put it into your hand. Right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six non-land snow permanents and three snow lands. We are trying to pick up a lot more snow lands than this. Maybe we even have to just scoop up the snow island here. Because, like, Augur can be good... I don't know if it's definitely good here. I mean, it's definitely good. I don't know if it's definitely great, and Snow-Covered Island is definitely great. Masked Vandal's pretty solid. We'd like to wheel Frost Augur or Masked Vandal. I don't think that's super likely, but we might be able to wheel a Horizon Seeker here. I think I'm going to just bite the bullet here, take the Snow-Covered Island, because now that I have Spirit of the Alder Guard on top of Double Ice Hide Troll, I really want to take these on-color Snowlands incredibly highly. Wow, Shimmer Drift Veil or Yorn, God of Winter? That is 
a brutally difficult pick. Actually, there's three cards here, four cards here that we would really want. So if we're taking one of these two snow lands, which the, the Arctic tree line is a card I would really want, we're going to take Shimmer Drift Veil, because just the mana fixing on that is so good. But then there's also the Yara Mirror Lake, the blue sacrifice land. Later in the game, we can use this to copy one of our creatures, put an extra counter on the copy as well, so we can make a really big Bergstrider or a really big Spirit, something like that. Just get another copy of our biggest threat in the late game, really good ability but then there's like yorn three mana three three also a snow source also untaps all our snow lands whenever it attacks all our snow permanents too so it untaps itself i'm gonna take yorn here hopefully we end up with enough snow lands that yorn can really just go off and like give us a bunch of mana every time we attack with that but that seems like great here white black uh snow tapped land snow duel not really what i'm looking for i'm just gonna take another berg strider here Again, if this were like Arctic Tree Line where it's only one of our colors, even if it comes into play tapped, I'm still looking for that kind of snow source in this deck. So I'd take a blue-black snow land, a red-black snow land, a green-white, as long as it shares one of our colors, but this just has none of them. So it comes into play tapped and taps for colorless in our deck, so I'm just going to take Berg Strider. However, at this point, I mean, we have Spirit of the Alder Guard and Svela. I guess that's it for trying to pick up the snow duels. But if we end up getting more of those creatures that boast and pick up any land from your deck, just stuff like that for mana fixing, we could we could now just start looking at cards in any color, like what's the best card out of any color in this pack, and, and taking that kind of stuff. So like Bound and Gold in that last pack would start being a consideration. I do like Alpine Meadow here, but there's also Glimpse the Cosmos. We have Double Berg Strider, and we could pick up some... Um, some shapeshifters in blue some changelings that would help the glimpse i think this card is really good look at the top three draw one of them and then you do it again when you have a giant on the field but we do have got that red snow source we're seeing a lot of snow lands here i guess this is pick five so it's pretty early still i'm gonna hope that i can scoop up these snow lands later in this draft all right and now they're starting to disappear that gets me a little worried but we do get to pick up a horizon seeker here I probably want that over Provoke the Trolls, although Provoke the Trolls is solid removal. Not as good as Demon Bolt, because Demon Bolt is just cheaper and has Foretell versatility. Um, in an aggressive deck, this could be better than Demon Bolt, because sometimes you just win the game off of this by doing an extra five. But in our deck, we would just prefer like Demon Bolt and stuff. So it's a fine removal spell, but there are better ones and there are better ones at common. So I think we can pass up on it to take the really good mana fixer of Horizon Seeker. It also draws our snow mana. Glittering Frost seems like a pretty solid pickup here. Helps mana fix, helps turn one of our non-snow lands into a snow land. So immediately we're tapping for two snow mana off this card. That can trigger our Ice Hide Trolls. Uh, that's really good with Yorn. Really good if we pick up any of the 2-2 snow elf that untaps something. There is Search for Glory here, which could search for for glory. I mean, it can search for any of our bomby cards, any of our snow permanents, so like Bergstrider's Spirit of the Elder Guard, or any legendary card, which would be like Yorn. Yorn's also a snow permanent, so it is a tutor for pretty much anything, but I think we're just taking Glittering Frost. Snow-Covered Island, don't mind if I do. I am going to take it over Pilfering Hawk, although I do like that card. It gives us a two-drop and something that can uh, filter our draws later in the game. But Snow-Covered Island is just gas here. Same with Snow-Covered Mountain. Taking that over pretty much just the Lit Yara Kin Seekers. Our creature types are a little all over the place, although we do have a little bit of a giant theme, so a changeling would be good for that. But I don't see this getting a plus one plus one counter too often. Alright, we did wheel frost auger. I'm happy to see that. Now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 snow permanents. We're getting pretty close to half our deck being cards we could hit off of frost auger, and we should be at that amount by the end of pack three. So that's where frost auger actually just starts getting really good. And Arctic Tree Line still in this pack. We did wheel one of these snow sources. So that makes me very happy. It is it comes into play tapped uh, snow source that only provides one of our two. Um, or one of the two colors on the card, but it's still, you know, comes to play tap Snow Forest. Definitely fine for this deck with what we're doing. Another strategic planning or a mammoth growth. These are neither, neither of these are really cards that I'm really looking for in this kind of strategy, although I guess strategic planning is a little closer. We might even be at the point where we want just a big dork like Undersea Invader, but that card's generally 
pretty bad for the cost. It's just if you need the six drop, you can uh, definitely use it. Kind of like your spare sentinel, but we could also just try to splash it at Trickster God's Heist. I don't know, this is only good in pretty specific situations, but in those situations, it's fantastic. We're not really going to be a Fearless Pup deck, but we're probably not a Trickster God Heist deck. If we want the Invader, we do have it now. So, pretty unlikely to play these cards here, so I'll just throw them in the sideboard for now. So, what have we here? Ice Tunnel as our land slot. We're not going to take that here. Got Augury Raven. We have the Mirror Lake. Which is very solid. Righteous Valkyrie. This is just a 3 mana 2 4 flyer. We don't have any other life gain in this deck or any other angels or clerics. So 3 mana for a 2 4 flyer is still a really good rate. But when it's going to be off color for us, when we're splashing it off of Tree Line and Glittering Frost, we're not always going to be casting it on turn 3. So you have to think how good is a 2 4 flyer on like turn 5 or turn 6 when we're most likely to cast this. And it's just not actually that impressive. Maja requires double white, so pretty hard splash. I think I'm just going to take the Mirror Lake here. Although we could have taken the uh, Bound in Gold since I'm pretty low on removal. And uh, we're at a point here where we can we can splash pretty much any color. With Glittering Frost, we have um, also a Snow Source in any color if we pick it up off of Spirit of the Alder Guard or Horizon Seeker. So we have like three different ways to get any color of mana. And I kind of like taking Shimmer Drift Veil to just have yet another way to get any color of mana and another Snow Source. Although Volatile Fjord is a great option here as well. We are blue and red as our core. Well, as parts of our core three colors. I'm just going to take the Veil here. Definitely not able to splash in like a double black removal spell. We could also take Squash. We don't have like any removal right now, do we? Probably need to take something like Squash soon. Yeah, I actually don't love this pick, but we are very low on removal. Maybe I should have taken the Shimmer Drift Veil, and then now we're just scooping up Bound and Golds. Although Sirtlin Frostpire, against those really aggressive decks, being able to just do two to all creatures in the late game can sometimes let you stabilize, so Frostpire is usually pretty sweet. I think I am going to take Bound and Gold here. Actually, Binding the Old Gods is just as easy of a splash, because it only requires one of our off-color mana, and this also grabs... Uh, a forest, which could be a green-white source or just a green source, and it it can be a snow land pretty much every time. Yeah, Binding the Old Gods actually seems pretty sweet here if we're taking just a removal spell to splash in. Would love to wield the Frost Pyre. I don't know how likely that is. Priest of the Haunted Edge. Black is kind of hard for us to hit right now, but we have so many snow lands. So, we're like, we're not playing this on turn two and blocking... But we can still use it as a removal spell, and maybe now we try to scoop up more black sources like Sulphurus Mire. So we can play it on turn two more often. I guess the Lindworm's pretty good, and we do need some more ways to close out the game. Right now we just have like double Berg Strider out of Spirit. Lindworm's pretty great at the top end of the curve. We've got enough Stow Lands now that I'm okay letting some of these pass by, even if they don't wheel. I'm actually gonna take a Lindworm. I want some more just big late game duders. Another Ice Side Troll seems great, but there's also Behold the Multiverse. Pretty hard pick. The third Ice Side Troll to have just a lot of these threats seems pretty great, but Behold the Multiverse for some draw power is also fantastic, and this helps you mana fix just by scrying into whatever color you need, or attempting to scry into whatever color you need. Fourteen creatures here. Beholder Eyeside Troll. Is she going to take Behold the Multiverse? Eyeside Troll is also more likely to wheel, but I'm pretty sure there's at least one other person at this table drafting a similar snow strategy. So I don't think it will wheel, but Behold the Multiverse definitely won't. Rune of Speed is not good for our deck because we don't have any equipments. Mist of Lit Yara's not great. Maybe we play a Gates of Istfell, just splash in that. That sack ability seems fine. Blue is one of our main colors, so getting double blue is not that hard. We just need to get another white. Yeah, it's that or a Frost Peak Yeti or Mist of Lit Yara, which are all just pretty mediocre. Masked Vandal's pretty good. It's probably good to get another 2 mana card here, although we could take Glacial Floodplain. Also helps us splash in the white for Gates of Istfell. Gives us another Snow Source. Does seem solid. I do like having a Masked Vandal a lot. 
just that main deck hate for artifacts and enchantments that would let us take out like the broken wings. By being so diligent taking all these snow lands like pack two, we can pass up a lot of them here, I feel. Doomscar Titan's not really for this kind of deck, but it's still like solid. If we foretell it, it's a five mana five four haste by itself, which it will be by itself a decent amount of the time in this deck, but still. It's also a giant. We have some cards that care about giants. We did wheel a bound in gold here. We can scoop that up, try to splash it in. And we're not going to wheel any of the snow lands, unfortunately, but we can take a rootless U. It helps us grab a ravenous lindworm when it dies. So just a nice threat on turn five that replaces itself when it dies a lot. Well, I guess we do get a snow curve play. It's not that I have bound in gold and, uh, and gates of Istfell. I guess that's a little playable. Oh yeah, because Horizon Seeker actually only grabs basics, so it is good to have the one white basic land. I'll take Kin Seekers. We've got enough giants now that Kin Seekers might do some stuff. Master Scald could get back Binding the Old Gods, but I don't think we're playing any of these three cards, actually. Maybe Disdainful Stroke would be the most likely. And Frostbeak Yeti over Grim Draugr, but we're probably not playing that. And another Undersea Invader. Probably cutting these invaders, although they give us more cards to, to cast the U with. So I need to cut nine cards here. This is going to be a pretty difficult deck build. I'm not fantastic at these sort of snow decks. I've not drafted these often at all. Cut Broken Wings, cut Seize the Spoils. Cut the Strategics, because we have Glimpse the Cosmos and Behold the Multiverse now. Cut a Vault Robber. And then one more cut to go. What do I not want here? Probably just cut one of these Frost Peak Yetis. They're like our weakest creatures. Yeah, this deck is weird. <laughs> I don't I don't know about this one. I don't know about the snow piles. They always just look like an absolute pile to me, but we drafted pretty well. I think at the last pack, we probably actually still did want more snow sources, so I should have still taken those more aggressively. Um, at the same time, like... The main pick that I took where I would have liked the Snowland was like the white-blue Snowland. I think I took like Squash over it. And we did end up with only three removal spells, so we probably did need to take Squash on the Squash pick at least. Uh, but I think there were some other picks I made that uh, probably should have still been going after those Snowlands really highly. So... We just need to make sure that our mana is good, which is really difficult in this kind of deck. Oh my god, yeah. Look at that. Okay, so 11 green, 8 blue, 4 red are our main colors. 11 green. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, we have 4 green sources right now. I think we want more than that. We've got... One, two, three, four, five red sources. What is going on there? Auto's, auto suggestion. You have five red sources and four green sources when we have 11 green symbols and four red. That should be the opposite. We need to cut just both of the regular snow mountains and throw in two just forests here. So blues are our second highest at eight. Right now we have one, two... Three, four, five blue sources? That seems solid. Because now we have one, two, three, four, five, six green sources. So when they have one more green source than, than blue sources here. None of our red cards require double red because we can hit the Fertel on the Doomscar Titan. Titan, so we're good with the red sources as they are. Don't throw any more mountains in for sure. What do I have for black sources right now to cast? I have one black card, Binding the Old Gods. I think I want to cut the swamp. So I have just the ice tunnel in terms of lands, but in order to get ice tunnel, I have Horizon Seeker that makes two black sources, Spirit of the Alder Guard that makes three 
black sources. Actually, no, Horizon Seeker, yet again, I'm confusing myself. The Horizon Seeker can only grab basics, so maybe that would that would definitely be the reason to run the, the Swamp. I think this deck actually didn't end up with enough fixing, so I think we do want to seize the spoils just for that treasure token to occasionally help us out. And it's sort of a draw spell, like it seems fine. Cut another Frost Peak Yeti for that. Frost Peak Yeti is good in the mirror, so we might end up in some games where we actually would have wanted those Yetis. We'll see when we get to the gameplay if I push the Yetis back in. Maybe like, maybe a Yeti over like a Doomscar Titan, because that doesn't make the most sense in here. Just 5 mana, 5, 4 haste. It's not often really going to be winning us the game. We're going to be winning the game once we like clear the, the board and just have the biggest creature. Or not even clear the board, we can't really clear, but we could just make bigger creatures than our opponents. Yeah, I kind of do like a Yeti over Doomscar Titan. We'll see. We are trying to also like use cards like Svella to just keep casting our biggest cards. And we could win some games with Cauldring as well. If we draw Yorn in the late game, we just cast it as Cauldring and start replaying our snow stuff that's died. Just trying to outvalue our opponents here. I think I'm okay leaving Doomscar Titan in though, because it's also just bigger than Frost Peak Yeti, even if the Frost Peak Yeti can maybe. Uh oh. Uh oh. Everything's a f 5 mana 5 4 now. <laughs> Broken Wings is a 5 mana instant that does nothing. Um, hopefully that saves the deck. I'm gonna go back in there. Okay, is it fixed? All right, it's fixed. I don't know what happened there, but that was weird. Let's go back to our mana base. Um, now that I've thrown Seize the Spoils back in, I'm gonna cut that Swamp, but it is risky now that I can't grab it off Horizon Seeker. But I really want to make sure I'm getting my core colors. Like, if we're cut off from playing Binding the Old Gods for a bit, that's fine. It's our one black card other than Cauldring, which we can always cast as Yorn if we don't have black. We also have Svela for mana fixing, I suppose. And now... We have one, two, three, four, five blue sources. One, two, three, four, five, six green sources. I think I put one more forest in this deck and we'll call it a day. Yeah, I think I'm I'm fine with that. We will do, if I remember, I'll do some, some double checking on this deck after some gameplay because I'm very inexperienced with this sort of strategy. Mainly just an aggro player myself. Lots of Dwarven Hammers. If I see Dwarven Hammer, I'm drafting Dwarven Hammer. It doesn't matter what I'm <laughs> what I'm drafting. I have definitely picked up double Dwarven Hammer in just a core white black aggressive deck before. Let's get into these games. See how well this uh, this five color snow kind of thing goes here. These snow decks are pretty difficult to draft, but if you can draft them well and they're open, they are just the best strategy in the format generally. It's this or the really aggressive decks. <gasps> Turkey finger, let's go. So, starting off, our, our lands are pretty terrible. We can foretell Doomscar Titan, but then we have to hit a green source. We do have more green sources than anything else. Um, seven green sources. Seven green sources would be 21% chance of drawing green. So I could be sitting here for f like five turns on average. Yeah, this has got to be a mulligan. We just need green in our opener, so no. All right, well, we have green in our opener. Uh, although now we're just casting turn three Ice Hide Troll, and if we hit any land, we get to cast Spirit of the Alder Guard, and then that will grab whatever color we need the most. Just play a non-snow land first. We'll be all weird about it. I guess technically, if I draw absolutely perfectly, I should have played Snow Covered Forest first, but I doubt it. Maybe we're drawing absolutely perfectly here. We'll see. 
We'll see what land we draw next turn. This could have been a mistake if I draw some other land and I don't want to play the Snow-Covered Forest turn three. If I draw like Snow-Covered Mountain, then we could have just had a board of nothing but snow sources and that would have been pretty good. So our opponent beholds the multiverse, casts it turn two. Did draw Snow-Covered Island. All right, we could have had all snow sources on this board, which would have made Spirit of the Alder Guard bigger. Should have just dropped the snow land. I did not think it would matter at all, but that's that's pretty funny. Suffering from success. We are going to cast Spirit of the Alder Guard next turn, play Snow-Covered Island, Spirit of the Alder Guard, pick up a red source for Basalt Ravager. Seems pretty great. Vega the Watcher for our opponents. Um... Definitely attack in with Eyeside Troll. Basalt Ravager, let's see, I have a Troll Warrior, a Human Wizard, so Basalt Ravager is pretty likely to do two damage when it comes in and kill Vega next turn. So that's pretty solid. Cast Spear of the Alder Guard. I kind of want to get an untapped source so I can choose to play Rootless U if I want. Uh, I don't have a tapped red source anyway, so it doesn't matter because we're definitely taking a red source. I should have attacked first in case they had... Nothing? Yeah, there's nothing for one blue that would have really got me there. Unless they're running the one mana one two flash that gives a creature minus two till end of turn. But yeah, I definitely should have attacked before I played Spirit just in case, but very unlikely. Well, now they have three toughness on Vega, so Basalt Raptor's not gonna kill Vega anymore. Basalt Raptor still is doing two damage on this board. If they use that treasure token to play some kind of two toughness creature, that'll be good for me. But if they also just don't do anything with it, we can just slam in for five, six, seven, eight. I could dump all my mana into this and hit for six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I either hit for eleven or drop Ravager, hit for two, and use Frost Augur, or just cast the five four. I think I cast the five four here. They need like a Doom Scar to get me, and casting the five four doesn't really play into a Doom Scar. Because if they Doomscar with my 5-4 on the board, I just pick up a 6-6 six, six and cast that next turn. So even if their plan is to, like, Wrath the board here, I guess it could be to just bounce one of my cards. Bouncing Spirit's actually pretty solid for me. Oh, Iron Verdict. Forgot about that card. That is much less solid for me. I'm doing a lot less damage here, putting a lot less pressure on my opponent. Do not like that. Six mana for our opponent now, plus the gold main pick treasure token. Makes seven. And a gold mod champion it is. Doesn't really do anything here. Bound and gold on the rootless use so they can kill it without having to play into its effect. We drew our own bound and gold we can cast on Vega. They can still draw cards off of Vega, but they didn't foretell anything that turn. They had a ton of mana. I guess they did really want to play the creature and bound and gold there so they could still have more for tell which bound and gold doesn't play around i kind of want to use frost auger before i do anything here because it puts the card into my hand so if i draw something good i can just play it immediately like if i draw berg strider here i just drop that let's see just a land so oh it doesn't put them on bottom if they're not dang so we're gonna have to just chill with the frost auger I guess we send an Ice Hide Troll. If they block, we can Basalt Ravager kill it. We could also just spend the mana to pump there. I actually don't have the white mana for Bound and Gold anyway, so I can't stop Vega. That's not great. I have a Human Wizard, a Troll Warrior, and a Tree Folk. We're just not going to be doing three with Basalt Ravager, most likely. I guess if I draw a Berg Strider, I will. I think I do want to play a 4-2 and have another attacker. It's it's pretty close, because the 4-2 does just trade into Goldmaw Champion on blocks. So we might want to hold on to it, like if we do draw Burgstrider, but we know we're drawing nothing next turn. I guess Frostalker would give us another shot. I'm just going to slam down the Basalt Ravager. to our opponent. 
They're down to 10 now. We are winning the race by a little bit, but they've got a lot of cards left. Alright, Vega, come on in. Down to 11, they get another treasure token. So they have 8 mana, 9 mana available now. So they can really cast a lot here. Clarion Spirit and uh, could cast a 7 mana spell afterward. So they can definitely double spell any turn they have the cards to do so. Another Vega to double spell get the spirit token, but the first Vega does die. So I guess they cast the second one just to get a 1-1 a one, one blocker here. Alright. We are going to try the Frost Augur here to get a Berg Strider. Did get a White Source. Did get the Bound and Gold for their Vega. If I Bind and Gold Vega, I hold two Snow Mana up, so I do give something indestructible here. They have three mana up. They probably aren't getting Eyeside Troll with anything. I think I am binding the Vega, then they get to move the pick over to the 1-1 flyer, start hitting me for 2 a turn instead. And we'll accept the trade of our Ravager into one of their ground creatures. Alright, hit for 4 here. Down to six. We take four damage down to seven. Still winning the race for sure. We have five snow sources. If we draw one more, we could triple pump troll. And even if we don't, we have the mana to use frost auger and double pump the troll. So troll hits for six. They have to save a chump blocker for troll or kill the troll. They did draw a card to foretell with Vega, which is not good for us. That means they will be drawing a card when they cast that, and it could be five to a tapped creature, so we need to definitely hold up the double pump on Troll for in case they do that. Ooh, they're going all out here. All right. We're taking four. They get a treasure. So they it must be a blocker here. No. So it must be instant speed removal in blue or white. The only thing that would save them is if they have the thing that, like, Put something back in our hand, as far as I remember, or a flash flyer, flash like three power flyer. I think I do still draw pre combat, although I could hold up the um, triple pump with troll, but I only need double pump to kill them. Attack, go to blocks. They let it go to blocks. It'll be four damage now. It's indestructible now, so it has to be the thing that puts it back in our hand. So we'll hold up triple green. To just recast troll. We take four on the crack back. If it is the thing that bounces it back to our hand. Run ashore. Okay, they're going to put it on top and put the Vega back in there. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, that's actually brutally bad for me here. That probably just wins our opponent the game because they hit us for four now because they have more than enough mana to boast with Goldmod Champion. God, I don't know how Run Ashore is just the greatest card in the universe for my opponents, but terrible for me every time. I don't think there's any other card in the set that has a higher discrepancy between its power level when I cast it and when my opponent casts it. Oh boy. Yeah, I don't think we can win now. I think we put it on bottom or... If I put it on bottom, I'm just drawing Bind the Monster and I tap something, take damage, and lose. Yeah, we're just 
putting it on top. But, uh, yeah, super dead. Take four now, cast it. They, uh, equip their flying creature and deal three to us in the sky. Behold the multiverse was the foretold card. Brutal start to this this draft's gameplay. Taking four down to three. We're, there's a hundred percent like we know the outcome of this game, but I'm just playing it out anyway. We know exactly what we're drawing next two turns if we somehow lived this turn, but we don't live this turn. They've got more than enough flying damage without even casting Mistwalker. Like, I can Frost Augur and see my Bind the Monster again, but I can't draw it, obviously. Just attack with the Flyers and end me. Ooh, center with everybody. Get fancy about it. All right, that is going to end game one. We're pretty close to Mythic if I get a, like, six win run out of this draft. Could get there depending on when I get my wins and losses. See how it does here. I'm not a huge fan of this deck because I'm just not a huge fan of the snow strategies in general. And not, uh, not great at drafting them. So we'll see. See how it pans out here. But that is a possibility in today's draft, which is pretty exciting. No green sources, but we have more green sources than anything else. I think I'm willing to keep this because of that. If we hit any two lands, we do get to play a Bergstrider on turn five. That is pretty slow. We did draw a green source immediately, so paid off pretty well. Get that turn three Yorn and try to ramp into stuff, or we could hold off on it and just try to play Caldering and win the game via value. If my opponent's on a pretty quick deck, I probably play Yorn, and if they're on a slow deck, we play Caldering, and it's looking like they're probably on a slow deck. I kind of want to hold off on Masked Vandal as well for that reason, uh, so I might actually get some get something killed off of it. So I'm just going to play the Snow Island here, not reveal my green to my opponent till turn three. Yeah, they're definitely, I mean, they're, they're Grixis with a bunch of non-basic lands. Ooh, wow, Svela. Priest of the Haunted Edge is definitely going to be able to kill stuff here. So it's going to be able to kill my trolls even through their indestructibility, but I think I still cast the troll. Like, worst case scenario, late game, I can bring him back with Cauld Rings. We definitely don't sit here doing nothing. They do have to play one more Snow Source to give minus three, minus three with Priest of the Haunted Edge. If they can't, we do get to attack him with Troll. All right, Demon Bolt is the foretold card. That works as well. I'm actually not that bummed about our Ice Hide Troll getting Demon Bolted, simply because of the fact that they're one snow land away from killing it anyway, even if we had indestructible mana. Normally I would be fairly bummed about an Ice Hide Troll dying though. I think we behold the multiverse looking for red sources, because our other options are just a Vandal or really a Cauld Ring here. And we know next turn we want to play the Berg Strider, so even if I cast Cauldring here, I'm not recasting Ice Side Troll next turn, so we're not like setting up for a play there. I think our, our best curve is Behold the Multiverse on 4, Berg Strider on 5, and on 6 we can play Cauldring and Ice Side Troll. Which seems pretty solid. And that's like even if we don't draw the green source for Svela, uh, to where Svela is not an option. I guess... I could just do this at the last possible second, just because... Just do it at their end step, since all my mana is going to be tapped out anyway. We don't need to see the cards immediately. We can maybe scare them into thinking we have something, I doubt it. There's the third snow source, so they have enough to kill an Ice Side Troll now with their priest. And Draugr's Helm it is, that'll be a 4-4 menace. Well, they're going to have some threatening stuff here, but we do get to Bergstrider and tap it down for a turn. Cast Behold, looking for, there we go, Snow Mountain, and another Bergstrider is a fantastic draw. We'll just scoop that both up. And a Snow Forest coming up here, more, more snow. I'm loving that. We're actually going to be able to cast Svela in the late game when we already just have eight lands out to start using that. All right, Bergstrider. 
game's looking pretty sweet. We can also Masked Vandal the Draugr's Helm and just make that a 2-2, actually. That actually does seem pretty viable. We would have to exile an Ice Hide Troll to do it right now, which I don't really want to exile something from my grave when I have Cauldring. I guess they did hit the fourth snow land and get to just kill a Bergstrider, so I could exile that instead. But also just recasting Bergstriders could work out well here. Yeah. Priest of the Haunted Edge. So they get to kill my next my next Bergstrider as well. I think I still want to play another Bergstrider. I have five mana, so with six mana, I could cast Cauldring and bring back an Ice Hide Troll. But then I'm not blocking the Menace or the Flyer. I think I still have to just drop a Berg Strider here, so I think I play the Tapped Gates. Now we have our white mana if we draw into, like, Bound and Gold. Tap down the big old four power Menace creature again. Mistwalker does hit us for four as well, but they have to dump all their mana into it to do that. We might be using Priest on Berg Strider again here. All right. Six mana available. We'll have seven mana next turn, so we have enough to play Cauldring and bring back something that costs four or less, which unfortunately is not a Bergstrider. That costs five. So we're two turns away from just going... Um, ooh, Doomscar Titan could be for lethal. If we get enough four-power creatures out, <laughs> Doomscar Titan can, uh, can hit for lethal, like, immediately. I think I do want to start doing the Cauldring thing, but I'm not saving a blocker for a Zombie Berserker if I do that. Seven mana, what could I do here? I'm going to play the Snow Source. So seven mana, I think because I have eight mana next turn, we could play Cauldring and Bergstrider next turn. So I think this turn we play like Svela, Mask Vandal, and Fortella Doomscar Titan. And we're actually just exiling our Troll Warrior, unfortunately. But because we're going to be just dumping Berg Striders back on this board, like we're doing better things than, than the Troll Warrior. Yeah. Got to get rid of that Draugr's Helm, I feel. And then just foretell the Doomscar Titan, because might as well. We've got the mana for it. Our opponent beholds the multiverse. So now we're just taking the flying damage every turn, which means, you know, next turn, once we play a Cauld Ring, we can start just repeatedly playing Berg Striders and tapping down the flyer. I guess, actually, no, we can't. Can we do that? If we do... Yeah, because we're still paying the mana to cast it. So we will be paying Snow and tapping their stuff down. Uh, well, this is obviously something to kill Svela, but I'm going to have Cauldring, and I'm dumping all of my mana into Cauldring and Bergstrider anyway, so I'm just going to do the double block. If they kill Svela, it's no big deal, because I'm still several turns from activating her, just because I'm spending eight next turn to Cauldring and Bergstrider, and then next turn I'm playing Bergstrider again with Cauldring. So if they like frostbite here, it's whatever, it's fine. Way down, also fine. Narfi Betrayer King. Yeah, now I have to get a way to block Narfi. And I can't afford to cast Glittering Frost here, unfortunately, because we're down one mana doing that. We spend three and then get two mana from the land that we tap. So we have to wait on Glittering Frost till next turn. Uh, but once we do Glittering Frost, we can just sack this Gates of Istvel, gain some life, draw some cards, which is cool. Definitely playing Cauldring. And playing a Bird Strider. With Snow. Tap down Mistwalker, chump block Narfi. I, 
guess Mass Vandal is two damage with a Doomscar Titan, so maybe I don't chump block Narfi. I probably do. I'm at a pretty low life total, but I guess I am casting multiple Berg Striders here and doing a Gates of Istfel soon enough. I think we still do chump here, though. I'm just scared. I'm a little shook. Elder Fang Disciple. Where there goes Glittering Frost, but that's fine. It wasn't doing much for us. It was going to let us use Gates, but... It's not the craziest thing in the world. We'd also just draw a White Source and be able to do Gates. Like this. Arctic Tree Line will get us there. So... Tap down Mist Walker again. And I can start actually just trading into Narfi and recasting Berg Strider. So if Narfi attacks, I just trade with my new Berg Strider, I think. But we definitely keep tapping down the Mist Walker. What happens if they have a removal spell if I attack with this Berg Strider? If they have a removal spell, they hit me for five. Yeah, I can, I'm just going to send in. Well, actually, it's real debatable because I forgot that the new Berg Strider comes into play tapped. So I can't just trade with the new Berg Strider. If I want to trade with Narfi on their attacks, I have to hold this one back. But I guess I am trying to get that Doomscar Titan in for lethal. But I could also probably just win this game called ringing over and over. Ooh, no attacks. Drop the tree line. Yeah, Cauldring with Arctic tree line and Asfella is going to be on board. I like the attack here, giving me access to Berg Strider to tap down Mistwalker again. One, two, three, four, five. We'll have one, two, three other mana ups. We don't have enough to sacrifice gates and play a Berg Strider. I guess that is the problem. We're not at enough mana to just play a Berg Strider and um, and sacrifice gates of Istfel yet. One, two, three, four, five. We're one mana off from being able to sacrifice gates as well. I guess I could play Doomscar Titan here and attack for, for 15. They've got no blockers. Oh wait, no. It comes into play tapped. I gotta keep remembering that. Narfi comes into play tapped as well, but they just cast Narfi and it untaps by the time they go to combat. The fact that I can cast Doomscar Titan here means I probably should, although I don't think I should attack with both. I probably just attack with Doomscar and hit for 5. Although, hitting the 10 does half their life total. Yeah, I'm not going to really try to win off of the Doomscar out of nowhere for 20. As cool as that would be, Cauldring is just winning this game if it goes long. We just start hitting with Doomscar Titan every turn, I think. What is this, Poison the Cup? Or something? They only have four snow sources, so if they... Okay, I was going to say, if they poison the cup, then they can't bring Narfi back, but it looks like it's Demon Bolt, so they absolutely can. Actually, I really hope that our opponent keeps letting us get this Berg Strider killed, because if they don't, then can't really do anything about their flyer. Yeah, I'm really happy with these trades. Because if we weren't able to keep recasting Berg Shredder, we're just taking like four in the air a turn. We would die much faster than this pinging for one a turn from Elder Fang Disciple right now. So still one man away from using Gates of Istfel. Should play Berg Strider again. We got to keep that Mistwalker tap down. Although, alternatively, we could just bite the bullet, take a hit from Mistwalker and get Isfella out. I'm not... I am not that bold. 
Ryzen Seeker would trade for a Narfi, but then I wouldn't be casting a Berg Shredder again, so we're gonna hold off. Ooh, I really hope that isn't what like convinces them to not attack with Narfi. They might sacrifice a Frostpire here though, but then they won't have the mana to bring Narfi back, so they don't attack with Narfi. It's actually really bad for us because it kills our Horizon Seeker, which is whatever, but it convinces them to not attack with Narfi here because they're not going to immediately bring it back. That is what's worse for us. Not being able to just Berg Strider again this turn. Oh my god, okay. I'm super happy to see that. Did not expect that at all. Jarl the Forsaken, kill the other Bergstrider? Alright. Well, now I don't have to keep trading Bergstriders. Ooh, Kinseekers. Kinseekers I just play as a 2-4. If I hit an untapped land off of Gates of Istval, I could Gates here and then get the Bergstrider mana. And what happens if I don't hit the Bergstrider mana? Then I play a Svela, I have a 2-4. They're not getting Narfi back, so a 2-4 blocks Jarl well. But I do take the... Oh wait, no, I, it comes to play tapped. <laughs> Whatever I bring back comes to play tapped, so I'm not blocking Yarl. So I take three there, I take one, two, three, four from Mistwalker. So I take seven total if I don't hit a land off Gates of Istfell. How many tapped lands do I have left? I have seven lands in this deck, two of which are tapped. So I have three untapped lands in my next 19 cards. That is way too risky. I think, to go for the Gates of Istvel play. I think I called ring for Bergstrider. Tap Mistwalker. Drop Kinseekers. Waiting on Kinseekers would allow me to get a counter on it and scry one, but it's also already big enough to block their Jarl, and that's mainly what I want to do. An Ice Spine Pillar is really good for our opponent here. Really bad for us. We're really just looking for Bound and Gold or, or Binding the Old Titans or anything like that to win this game. Ravenous Lindworm does quite a lot of work here. We can play a Lindworm and play Svela. And then since we're gaining life, we can just take that hit from Mistwalker. And then we have a Svela ready. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Is that better than just grabbing a Berg Strider right now? Probably, because it also gives us a blocker for Narfi, so we can just attack with Berg Strider. Yeah, and that's holding up all the mana we need. Oh, my bad. My apologies for the phone. All right, Svela, come on out. It's your 2-4 body on the floor. Oh, yeah, they have Ice Spine Pillar now. Yeah, that Ice Spine Pillar is brutal. So they actually just tap down Linworm when we don't have a Narfi blocker. Or they're just not attacking with Narfi anyway. That's solid. They're scared. Our creatures are big now. Good triple tap here. Alright. They hold up the mana to recast Narfi or use Ice Spine Pillar. Or maybe they have a two mana instant. Oh, or they just have a Dusk Wielder. Do really want to play? Squash, we got the way to kill Mistwalkers, so we don't have to keep Bergstridering down their Mistwalkers anymore. Squash does only cost two mana as well. We have ten mana, but only one red, so I can't squash and use Svela's um, looting ability. Let's just... Mm, I want to squash Mistwalker right now so I don't have to think about it later, so if I... I, I can't, like, mess up my mana by doing this. That is exactly what we needed to take this game. So, if I spend... If I use Fella, I get a Manolith, so I have one, two, 
three, four, five still. Yeah, I can absolutely use Svela here and still play something from Grave. So we'll do that. I guess I could have held off on that to use it as a blocker. <laughs> Again, not, not an ideal play, but I really want to make sure I don't mess up my mana. Where I know I can keep doing stuff. So we'll play a Bergstrider, tap down Narfi. They have five power there. They're going to tap down Lindworm in that case. Uh, but a trade Bergstrider into Jarl is very solid here. So we're still going to attack with that. Kinseekers, not so much. I guess this is this is leaving me with not a lot of defenses. So I just chump block their 4-3 and take two damage from Duskwielder hitting me for one and them boasting. Probably still worth the attack unless they play like a Doomscar Titan. They play a Doomscar Titan. It's a sad time. This is definitely where tapping down this fella was a really bad play because this is where we actually have some risk by doing that. Oh, they do use the Ice Bind Pillar to tap down Kin Seekers as well, so we actually do have a lot of risk if they draw into like a pump spell immediately. But then they're tapping down their whole field, so it has to be immediate lethal. And right now it's six damage. If they spend one to into it, so they have to have, like provoke the trolls and another mana. Yeah, if they're going in, they gotta be going in for lethal. Tap down Ken Seekers, they're going in. Three mana here? Run amuck would do it, but this is not the kind of deck that should have a run amuck in it. Down to two. And another Dusk Wielder. So they have one blocker. So they block the 6 6, take 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. They do survive. And now if they boast with if they boast with both of those, they drain me for lethal. Well, that is not a good time at all. So we need to make it so they can't do that. So we have to attack in a way where they have to. Sacrifice Dusk Wielder. Let's see, six. Actually, if I hit Bound and Gold off of Svela, I win. I am looking at the top four to do that. If I let them untap, do I just die? If I attack with Lindworm, six plus eight, it's 12. I have to attack with everything but Svela in order to present lethal, in which case they have to block something with Dusk Wielder to survive, so I know I'm only get boasted for one, but then Ice Bind Pillar gets in. I kind of have to just hit Bound and Gold, so let's do it. Alright. Binding the Old Gods works, too. That was terrifying. That game should not have given my opponent um, as much of a chance of winning as we just did. Um, so yeah, I probably should have spent some more more time figuring out the mana situation exactly and seeing that I could definitely use Fella's ability uh, at instant speed during my opponent's turn, uh, but I was getting real scared of the rope there. All panned out in the end. But uh, yeah, definitely some some misplays looking back on it that we could do better, but just a lot of cards on board, a lot of stuff uh, we're able to do. Got there in the end. All right. Definitely learning... Learning a lot of these cards in the deck as we play it here. Do get Ice Side Troll turn three if I hit any land. If we hit a red source, we're all set. If we don't, it's going to be a hard one, but I do have a Bind the Monster on their first creature if they're aggressive. Actually going to hold on to this one here. I don't really want to, but I feel it could go a lot worse here. Really just need one of any land to have some action going on this game. Bind and troll. There is a mirror lake there. Which is pretty perfect. Gives us the third mana for the troll. And a good card in the late game. Especially good with Lindworm. Harbinger turn two for our opponent. Looks like they're a bit uh, stuck on lands here. We'll play our troll. Does die to removal because we're not going to have our second snow source for who knows how long. Doom Scar Titan. So I have four mana now. I could keep the Harbinger tap just to keep them off of that kind of mana. 
but at this point they've used it to Fertelligan. There's no way at least one of these should be very castable for our opponent, so I don't think that tapping down the Harbinger is the play. I think we just attack in and pass. But now they could cast like two Behold the Multiverses even if they don't draw land here by using the Harbinger to tap for them. If this could tap for like creatures and stuff too, I think I'd kill it here, but... They're already doing pretty well, because like the odds of them just hitting a base secure are pretty high, because then they could just go land and cast another Behold the Multiverse anyway, if that's the plan. If the plan is double Behold. Score an Effigy, sure. So we're not attacking in now. And looks like it's going to our turn. Glimpse the Cosmos is pretty much exactly what we need here. We need to dig for a red source. Even if it's not in the top three, it'll help us get there by getting us closer. I guess Bergstrider. We're one mana off from Bergstrider, although we do have the mana for Horizon Seeker now. We could attack in with that and boast and make sure we hit a red source. But we can't play it immediately this turn, which is rough. So that, that gets us a red source guaranteed, but it gets the guaranteed red source two turns from now. And it dies the second it attacks. I don't actually like that that much. I kind of just want to take Bergstrider, to be honest. Because we hit any land, and that is just a very good card here. I'm actually going to bind Effigy. <laughs> Seems a little dumb, but I'm just going to get some more value out of my troll while I still can, I think. Unless my opponent counters this. I'd be a fan of that. Counter bind the monster instead of like a Bergstrider later. So, yeah, definitely throughout this game, if we're hitting, that's horrible for us. Not really going to play around a rare, so it's whatever. Their foretold card could have been, um, like, the deal 5 to a tapped creature. We would have been fine with that. So I'm not trying to play around that. And uh, obviously, rares are just not super likely, so not playing around the, the rare flash creature. But it did get us pretty bad here. We did hit that Bergstrider mana, so we get to tap down the flyer that they don't have to pay for. And we get to use Glimpse the Cosmos now. Because, yeah, that's the other thing about Bergstrider being a giant, letting us recast Glimpse. Gives us another cycle towards that red source. Pretty much just as quickly as Horizon Seeker would have. And this also slows our opponent down, gives us a good blocker on the ground. See, I think Bergstrider definitely panned out to be much better than Horizon Seeker would have been. Another mana, we could just cast Lindworm, but I am really wanting the red source still. And there we go. There's Behold the Multiverse, but we need to just take the guaranteed red. This lets us Basalt Ravager this turn, shoot something for two, kill Pilfering Hawk. It also lets us Squash, or it lets us seize the spoils and cast Squash. Like, seize the spoils squash here. Kill Glorious Protector. Giving them a 2-3 back isn't that good for them when we have a Bergstrider out anyway. Glittering Frost here. It's solid, but I can't play it and still squash something. Maybe I do squash Mistwalker instead of Glorious Protector. But they still have cards in hand, so they're still using their mana for stuff, so... Forcing them to use the mana to get extra power on their flyers seems fine. We're going to be playing more large creatures on the ground. So, yeah, giving them back the 2-3 does not seem that bad, all things considered. We also have Mirror Lake coming out with a Lindworm eventually. Okay, well, we probably just... Oh yeah, we ju just lose right now if it's a Bound and Gold Warhorn Blast. Fair enough. That combination of cards will definitely kill us. It's a pretty standard game there. Definitely stumbled on mana a bit, and that allowed the more aggressive deck to just take over. I do think we had the really powerful late-game stuff to 
attempt to stabilize there, but our opponent just had some real good aggression coming out. The Flash Flyer was definitely the big turning point of that game. Even without it, like, without it killing one of our cards, like, the 2-3 blocker on the ground just wasn't doing a whole lot for us, but that might have given us enough time being able to block ground creatures to to survive long enough to stabilize. So we might have been able to win had I not been attacking so aggressively with Eyeside Troll. So we probably should have just held off and, and realized that I was the defender in that matchup, but... We really didn't know that until they played the Flash Flyer, because before they played the Flash Flyer, the only creatures they had out were like a 1-3 and a 2-3, so they just didn't seem like that aggressive of a deck. The Flash Flyer in many ways completely turned around the game. Like, um, not just in, in who, who was like the aggressor are more likely to win, but also what their deck looked like. As soon as they played that Flash Flyer, I was like, just like, bam, now we're going to play a million Flyers and just go ham. I was like, oh, I guess that's happening. All right, so... I think we have to keep this. I mean, we have three colors. We have Squash, we have Yorn. I guess we don't have Squash unless I hit one more land, but we're going to be able to play it, just pretty much guaranteed. Yeah, I'm going to keep this. This is definitely not a mulligan. I guess last game we could have mulliganed more aggressively and maybe hit something better, but all things considered, the hand panned out is about as good as you could expect from what it looked like. Did take a while to get that red, but we hit our lands. Eventually didn't get completely stuck on mana. Opponent did mulligan once here. Mulligan twice. That is a rough one. They are playing red as well, so they could be some kind of aggressive deck. Kind of want to just play all of my snow lands for Yorn here instead of the tapped lands. Because if I draw like an untapped snow source again, like a snow plains, then, uh, then we could just get to have three snow lands on the board when Yorn comes out, which is really good. So I'm just going to play the snow lands here. Uh, drawing into season spoils makes me actually want a red source pretty badly. I think I play not Volt Slumber Mound so that next turn I can play Snow Covered Island into Yorn and the turn after that we can cast these the spoils because we don't actually have a turn 4 play without that. I guess Yorn does untap 2 lands so we could turn 4 Lindworm actually if we're lucky here. Fearless Liberator is pretty much the perfect card for our opponent in a Molta um, in a Molta 5. Because this just gives them more creatures off of this one card. It's exactly what they need to, to get the card advantage back on their, their board. Well, they're going to kill our Yorn here. But we still got to kind of make this block. We can't let them just keep making two ones for the rest of this game. Run Amok's pretty awful. This could just be the, the perfect five card hand for a Boros Agra deck. But we have to try <laughs> to stop it. Like, if we just don't block there against the Run Amok, now they just have three two ones slapping us every turn. We're definitely not winning that game either. So we just needed them to not have specifically like run amok. If it was frostbite or something, we'd be fine. Um, I think I seized the spoils. I don't have a four mana play here. So we seize, discard a forest, see what we draw into. I side troll glimpse the cosmos. I could glimpse the cosmos if I play snow covered plains. Although I can cast a lindworm next turn if I keep my treasure token. And that's probably better. So I'll play Gates of Istfel here to make sure I can cast Lindworm next turn. Just a 6-6 six, six that gains 4 is going to be really good against this kind of deck, unless they have Bound and Gold in hand as well. Breakneck Berserker, seems solid. Down to 7. We're casting a Lindworm. Although I could cast... Now I could cast Fella and Eyesight Troll, a 2-3 and a 2-4. That'd be pretty good. 2-3 two, blocks the 2-1, two, 2-4 two, blocks the 3-2. Three, two, I take 2, go down to 5 life seems pretty good as well, and I would still be able to Lindworm the turn after that. Probably better to spread out my blockers, because if I just play Lindworm, I die, I die to um, Bound and Gold. They have exactly 7 on board. If I play Svela and Eyesight Troll and they have Bound and Gold, they bind Svela. This blocks there. I take 5. It's still a bad spot, but I don't immediately die. 
Do I die to run amok if I just play Lindworm? No, because I go to 11. Actually, yeah, I go to 11 with Lindworm, so I don't die to Bound and Gold. But I basically die to Bound and Gold. I go to 4, and then I try to play two creatures and survive, which doesn't... Yeah, I probably die. I think I play Svela Eyeside Troll. have to use the treasure here even if I play the forest so we'll play the snow land four mana for our opponents see what's going on here story seeker that's fine and axe guard cavalry is fine as well could definitely stabilize here mast vandal if they draw like a dwarven hammer or something we've got that we're definitely just casting Lindworm now. Start trying to take over with Svela. I'll have the mana to Svela and cast Glimpse the Cosmos, or Svela and cast a Mask Vandal. Uh, by Svela, I mean make a Manolith. Don't have enough mana to spin the wheel on Svela yet, so we want to make some Manoliths if we can. So six mana here. I guess with one more land, I have enough to use Notfold Slumber Mound, get a 4-4 out as well, which seems good. And you can do that at instant speed. Yeah, if I draw an untapped land, I probably just do that. Glittering Frost here. If I Glittering Frost... One, two, three, four. I have four mana up afterwards. I have four mana after I use Glittering Frost, which is enough to cast a Masked Vandal and use Svela to make a Manolith if I make a Manolith during my turn, but I really don't want to do that because I want to hold as many blockers back as possible. I can't Glittering Frost and hold up Squash, which I actually hate, because I would love to hold up Squash. I think... The only way I hold up Squash is if I do absolutely nothing else, though. So I'm probably not holding up Squash, period. I think we want to play a Masked Vandal and just have another blocker right now. Oops. I need a green for this. We'll do that. Play Mast Vandal, play Glimpse the Cosmos. We don't have the mana to give the troll indestructible, but that's fine, it can still block a 2-2. Oh, I have the mana- oh my god, Mast Vandal's a giant, so it would give me the mana to squash. Oh my god, I could have held up squash by playing Mast Vandal. I totally forgot about the changeling thing. This is one of the things about the set that, like, um, like Marshall at Limited Resources says, the set's like doing your homework, and, uh, Voxy says, like, the set has way too many words. Like, this is an incredibly complex set with just a lot of different interactions and stuff. Like, look at how many words are on this Glimpse the Cosmos here. And all the changelings and stuff like that. Like, it's it's pretty brutal. I like Spirit of the Alter Guard as a big old blocker, but I also like just getting that forest so I can start spinning the wheel with Svela. We probably gotta just take Spirit, though. Like, I get to draw another card off of Glimpse next turn if I survive... I could cast Spirit of the Alder Guard and hold up Squash next turn, which is great. They have five mana now, could be Dwarven Hammer, and then Masked Vandal looks really sad. That's the biggest reason not to play Masked Vandal, is if they end up like drawing a Dwarven Hammer or something, we're super dead. Well, could have just had like plus two, plus one to the whole field this whole game, in which case we're pretty dead. Plus two, plus one to the whole field would be five there. This would be a 4-3, so I can't kill that unless I block with Lindworm. I would still probably prefer killing the Breakneck Berserker, right? Wait, no, it's plus 2, plus 1, right? Yeah, plus 2, plus 1. So that would be... 2 damage is still enough to kill Liberator. So we'd rather try to kill 
Liberator with that. This will just die if they have plus two plus one, but we have to block stuff. And if they have plus two plus one, this will just die as well. So we take five, six, seven, eight, nine. If they have the plus two plus one thing. Yeah, we're actually just super dead if they have that card. Because they can't block in a way where I'm going to get left with a lot of creatures. So we're just going to block the best way if they don't have that card. Yeah, if they don't have this card, this is the best block. But if they have plus two, plus one to everybody, we lose this game. Because we'll be left with only Lindworm, like no matter how we block. Because all their creatures have at least four power, and most of them will survive. The best blocks, if they do have that card, would be like block the two ones so that they die through it. Oh, if it's run amok, am I dead here? No. Awesome. Okay, so it was run amok. That is so good for me. Uh, I guess I don't have a giant out now for squash, but they've got four attackers. I've got four blockers that are definitely big enough to block their stuff. Play spirit, have four mana up so I can use Svela. I can use it even with three mana, so I'm going to play ice tunnel here. Pass turn really stabilized. They're at 22. I'm at five. Do I attack? I'm, I have this game so on lock if I survive that I'm actually just going to hold back all my creatures so I don't die to any shenanigans. It's the fact that last attack wasn't lethal means that I just if I survive this game, I absolutely win. Now I probably Berg Shredder down a creature. Now I get to start attacking with like Spirit of the Alder Guard. I guess Lindworm's a better attacker because Spirit dies to just two two ones. Could start using Svelo's ability as well. And then I'm not even using cards in hand to do things. That also lets me gates. Yeah, now I'm just doing things at instant speed. We just wait until we see how they attack. Get a bunch of value from our cards. Have this game pretty unlock, but I'm going to play it as safely as possible. Safest play might even be to just gates of ace 12, just to gain some life when I do stuff. But probably just putting more blockers down with Svela is super fine too. Wow. Bergstrider tap something down, bind the old gods, kill something. And get a land off of it. Bergstrider is another snow source for spirit as well. If I play Bergstrider and then I have a giant out as well, so I can play Bergstrider and squash this turn and just kill them real quick. Yeah, we'll just go for that. Probably squash Liberator. So we tap down anything else pretty much. I don't want to tap my red source, but I've got like Manolith and stuff, so Water Tapper's fine. Attack everything they block there. 6, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Not lethal, but they're dead in two turns. We can even do a glimpse here. Play a Frost Augur to have another blocker. We're just living the dream. Yeah, they're dead in two turns, easy. Unless they, like, Doomscar us. If they Doomscar us, we still have a Rootless U and they've got nothing, and we drew into Behold, which is great. Two blockers, attack everybody, block, block, take well over lethal. See if they have Fog. Even if they do, we have Gates to gain 2 life, or Slumber Mound to get a 4-4 blocker at instant speed, or we can just play a Rootless U as a 5-4. So we survive on board, even if they somehow, like, fog this turn. Alright, no fog it is. That will give us our second win with this uh, pretty multicolor snow deck. I guess it is sort of 5-color snow, because we have Cauldring as a black card that we have been casting. But mainly four color. We've got like one white card bound in gold and a lot of red, green, and blue. All right. 
I was really scared at the start of that game. My opponent had like the best first couple cards to have left in the the five card aggressive hand, but they didn't have the best uh, later threats after that turn. There was definitely a hand like their deck was drafted very well and built very well. There was definitely a hand that they could have had that would have absolutely beaten us. And it would have been the hand that had the plus two plus one to everybody at the end of it. Or a lot of other options, like the plus one plus one double strike card, I think probably would have done it as well. Dwarven Hammer would have been brutal. Could have got there as well. So definitely just not a great time for our opponent having to take that mulligan and then uh, having a pretty good hand for, for a mole to five, but not quite getting there. We're going to keep this. It's slow, but our deck is slow. And we can cast everything in it. Like, we can cast Binding the Old Gods with this. So, we're actually uh, we're actually pretty good on the colors here. We just don't have red. Maybe I do need more red sources in this deck. I did cut them pretty aggressively. Ice Hide Troll turn 3 here. So, we play another Tapped Snow Land. Turn three, untapped snow-covered island. All our sources are snow, and we have an ice side troll on board, which is pretty terrifying. Death Knell Berserker from our opponents. Ooh, Frost Augur to try to draw cards. We're going to do that later. We're definitely just still slamming down ice side troll first. If they play anything really bad, we can binding it. If they just attack here... Got three black mana up. They play the like plus two plus oh and bring it back from grave card. I don't think we block if they attack. If they only have one mana up, we block. All right. They don't attack then. I could even just binding their first creature. They're on triple black, so I could try to get as aggressive as possible by doing that. I binding their creature, cast rootless U turn five, grab another forest for my deck, and then start drawing cards off Frost Augur for the late game play. I don't need to binding this creature though, so I just play a Kin Seekers, I guess. Just a 2-4, and then I still have a blocker up for it. I guess I could hit for 4 here, though, and play Frost Augur. That's also solid. Yeah, I kind of just want to let that hit me. Just drop down a Frost Augur. They could have removal for Ice Side Troll now. Can't give it indestructible here. Could be mono black, that'd be pretty cool. Hailstorm Valkyrie, so. Definitely want the snow mana to give it flying, otherwise that card is not very scary. I think we're just attacking playing a 5-4 here. I can take two in the sky for a while. Especially because I'll be winning the race, which is these big green dorks. And if I side troll draws the removal, that's actually fine for us. Okay. Apparently they are definitely a two-color deck uh, and just stuck on black. I thought it would have been really cool to see a mono black deck. I did draft mono red once in this format. It's very unlikely to happen. It's pretty much never the right play in this format with how many powerful multicolored cards there are. But uh, sometimes you can do it for fun if one color is like really open. And there was a deck where I was trying to draft Rakdos aggro. Um... And red was just by far the most open color in the draft, so I ended up just being like, could I just do mono red here? And I, I went for it. It was a fun time, but I only went like 3-3 three, three or something. Uh, unfortunately, I was not recording uh, at that time. It was just a, a grind trying to get up into uh, high diamond to help hit mythic. We're definitely keeping this. We've got every color but red. Well, we don't have white, but white is not one of our main colors. We've got Yorn turn 3 because we just play two tapped lands. Yeah, definite keep. We got Glimpse turn two if we draw another untapped land. Untapped, uh, just like snow-covered mountain would be a beautiful draw here. Frost Augur is pretty solid as well, because that gives us something to play here and still try to hold up that Yorn mana. If our opponent ends up playing like a really slow deck here, we could also just not play Yorn so that we can play Keldring instead. Bind the monster. I think I want to play Yorn because Yorn also untaps Frost Augur, which is so cute. Um, and if I hit an untapped land, that means I get to play Lindworm next turn, and turn four Lindworm is nothing to scoff at. Our opponent has to play a three power blocker here for Yorn to be particularly bad, so they have to play like a three two Horizon Seeker or something. If they just tap out for Glittering Frost, this is pretty great. 
Oh, I guess we can't actually Lindworm. Oh, that's the whole time I wasn't realizing about Yorn. It does let you, like, double spell, like, a 3-mana and a 2-mana card, but it doesn't actually let you tap the mana and then untap it immediately. We are untapping Frost Augur here. I think I play Ice Hydroll, Attack, and then I have the mana for Glimpse the Cosmos and Frost Augur's ability. That's actually just a great curve. Oh, no, it doesn't untap the Mirror Lake, so I have to do Glimpse or Frost Augur's ability, and Glimpse is much better because it guaranteed gets us a card. Unfortunately, it's not instant speed, though, so Ice Hide Troll could die, but they're green-blue, so if they have removal, it's probably a fight spell or something that would kill the troll anyway. Of course, if they try to cast a black removal spell off Glittering Frost, that's bad for us, but... Like, what we know they're likely to do here is... Um, is, like, green or blue removal. So I'm not going to play around the potential color that we haven't seen coming out from Glittering Frost. We did pick up a land there so that we can cast Lindworm sooner. Still a little ways from it. Grizzled Outrider for our opponent. Bergstrider will be good here if I hit another mana. Ice Hide Troll attacks as a 4-3 Indestructible. That's just not going to do it. I guess I could spend the mana to give it the extra power and then do it again if I attack with Yorn. Then they block Yorn and take 6. Probably not worth it to let Yorn die at this point. Although I could also Frost Augur. You know, might actually be worth it. That's actually doing a lot attacking with Yorn. If I hit another snow card there, because then it's like I draw a snow card, attack with Yorn, untap Augur, and untap the lands to Ice Hide Troll twice. No, I'm just going to play another Ice Hide Troll if our top card's an island. Pass turn. Kind of wish we just held on to Cauldring. That was one of the things I wasn't uh, considering with Yorn. Yorn doesn't actually help us ramp the Lindworm. Because it doesn't keep the mana like a lot of the other cards that untap stuff do. Like, um... I don't know, like the Black Red Saga and stuff lets you keep mana throughout your turn for things like that. So I can tap down one of their creatures with Bergstrider... And then untap three snow sources so I could give one of our Ice Hide Trolls indestructible and plus two power, so whatever gets blocked by Kin Seekers. So then I attack with I attack with everybody. They block They block Yorn with Kin Seekers and take six, and I have an untapped auger. This might be about as good as attacking with Yorn is gonna get here. Yeah, so they block your and take six if I pump into it. Put them down to ten. Probably worth the pump. Although then I have to choose between Glimpse the Cosmos and Frost Augering. We're definitely going to choose Glimpse. That seems fine. Yeah, let's get that extra damage in, I feel. Their 5-5 five is going to be tapped again next turn, which means all these will attack in well next turn. Bound and Gold. I do have the white mana. Bound and Gold or Rootless You. I like Bound and Gold. They only have one creature big enough to really block my stuff. So shutting that down seems pretty solid. I guess the forest makes sure that we can hit Lindworm and Mirror Lake. We know we're doing Lindworm and Mirror Lake, although it'll be... Obviously, it'll take some time doing those things, but they'll both be good. We're running 17 lands, so if we take Bound and Gold, we have Bound and Gold to play immediately, and then we can still do the Lindworm Mirror Lake plan. It'll just be later in the game. How good is just dropping down Lindworm right now? They're at 10, so I kind of want to push this. Yeah, I kind of want to push the pressure on them. Like, make their other cards have to be good here. Like, if it's just lands, they die. All right, Lindworm is a good one, but we can bind that. And there's the land to be able to um, play our Lindworm next turn. Tap our non-snow. So I can bind in gold and attack with everybody here. I guess we are getting cracked back for 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But we'll both be at 10 here. So push that extra damage in, I think. 
Ooh, double block on the uh, Bergstrider. That is fair. That is the best block. Definitely hoping our Lindworm takes over this game, being a 6-6 six, six just bigger than everything else. So we do get to kill Sculptor of Winter. We're pretty sure they're not, like, counterattacking for a big attack here. Do I want to hit for 6, or do I want to try to draw off, Lind off of Augur? I think I just hit for 6. Again, Augur's only going to be drawing one time because of buying the monster. So we can hold off and do that when we need more cards. Right now, we don't need more cards. We still have plays next turn and the turn after that. So would rather do extra damage put him to 8 They have a 5-5 five, five, and a 3-5 now. Could be struggle. Yep, struggle to kill one of the trolls. Now they have a 5-5 five, five and a 4-6. Attack with just the 5-5. Five, five. I'll take it here, go to 15. Lindworm is going to try to take over this game. Hopefully they don't have another struggle. Another struggle would be bad for me, but if they don't have another struggle, then I still have a lot of action here. Mirror Lake on Lindworm is going to be beautiful if they don't have instant speed removal. And uh, green doesn't really have instant speed removal in this set, all the sorcery speed fight spells. Uh, but blue could have something to like bounce it to our hand. That would be really bad. If they tap out, we're 100% just dropping a Lindworm. We have a Binding the Old Gods as well to kill that flyer so we don't die from that. I think we're dropping another Lindworm when we've got the ground covered. Only have to worry about Mistwalker here, basically. Don't really have great attacks for a while, but once all our creatures gain death touch, we will. So Binding the Old God solves that problem as well, giving us a turn to attack in. So even if they double block, we kill both. We look pretty set for the late game, but our opponent's definitely playing a like green-blue snow deck here, so they're also going to have some powerful late game stuff. We just got to hope they don't draw into it. We've got Gates of Istfel later as well. Like, we've got options. So, green, black, and then our non... Oops, <laughs> that's not a non-snow. And then our non-snow source is here, so we can hold up Indestructibility off Eyeside Troll. But we're definitely just killing the Flyer. And I don't think we're attacking in, because they can do decent double blocks. They are down to 8, though. But, uh, as I said before, once Binding gets to Death Touch, we're going to have very good attacks. Here is where I'm tempted to actually use Frost Augur. Run ashore. Put Lindworm back in their hand. And our Lindworm... We'll just die because it's a token. Oh, it's really bad for us because then the Lindworms are just trading. Yeah, that puts things... Puts things back to a pretty even field. Run ashore again, doing a lot of work here. I don't think chump blocking with frost auger is going to be a major impact here, but also if we don't hit a snow card, it's literally zero impact. So I'm really, I really don't know if I tap frost auger here. I guess I have gates of Istfel for five next turn if I don't tap anything. Yeah, we'll just go to my next turn. If I don't draw into anything, then we'll just plan to use gates of Istfel. We're at 23, so I don't foresee them attacking in, really. Because if they attack with, like, everybody, we could just kill Lindworm with Ice Hide Troll and kill the 5-5 five -five with a 6-6. Six -six. Because we've got 4 snow. I don't expect an attack from our opponent, so I think we're fine to just pass through and then use Gates of Istfel. Of course, if our opponent has some sort of pump or trick here, they could do an attack, and that could go badly for us. All right, nice. We get to use our gates here. 
Gain some life, draw a couple cards. More importantly, Svel is a fantastic draw. And another snow land. Pretty beautiful. Now our creatures have death touch. But they're at 12, so I don't think we're attacking in, especially because Svela could just take over this game. Creatures you control gain death touch until end of turn. It's just the creatures that we have on the field when this triggers, right? Like Basalt Ravager is not going to have death touch. I don't think Basalt Ravager is going to have death touch because it wasn't on the field when that card activated. It does two damage. I don't think it's worth the risk of, uh, of seeing if it has death touch or not. I don't think it will. If it has death touch, it's, it's our best play to shoot Linworm, but I don't think that it will because it wasn't on the field when binding resolve binding the old gods rules rules I don't know if I'm going to be able to find this in time this information yeah, I don't see... Oh, I need to go, like, Gatherer for the alternate rulings. Binding the old gods. Summoners. Each symbol, a chapter, once a chapter, if multiple, removing lore. This is all just to do with sagas. Gather, you suck. That is not what I'm trying to figure out. All right, we're just playing Svela. Could play Horizon Seeker as well and still have two snow up. But I do want enough snow up to be able to trade with Lindworm too. Yeah, a 3-2 doesn't really help us block any better, so... We'll hold up the 4 snow mana to be able to block with 6 power with Eyeside Troll. We'll hold the multiverse from our opponent so they can be drawn cards for value as well. But Svela is going to be more impactful, hopefully, unless they immediately drew removal. I mean, they just drew 2 cards there. Land Struggle. I would be very sad. Land Mistwalker. Okay. That puts some pressure on us now. They'll actually be getting in for some damage here. Go to my turn now. Behold the Multiverse is the draw. Eight mana to use Fella's ability. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have one mana after that, so we just pass. I don't have enough to even foretell a card here and use Fella. Try to take over with Svela's second ability. I literally googled do like creatures played after binding the old gods resolve get death touch and, and nothing showed up so since we know they're just attacking with that I could try to hit a flyer here although I don't think I have a flyer I could try to hit squash or something yeah I don't have a flyer but I could try to hit squash so we'll just go for it hey squish <laughs> well that worked out I only have 15 cards left, so we could lose the mill here. Oh my god. Alright, second Mistwalker. How's it going? And another Ravenous Lindworm. Jeez, our opponent's deck is pretty stacked. We don't actually have another removal spell, I think. We have... Well, we have Bind the Monster. Bind the Monster to use on that Mistwalker. We could very well just lose this game because we don't have enough win conditions. Which is brutal. Because if I win this game, I hit Mythic. Well, Bergstrider's good. So... Like, I have a Doomscar Titan, Rootless U, Spirit of the Alder Guard, Kin Seekers. We just try to go wide enough that Doomscar Titan can win, I guess. So you just play all the creatures we can now. So we play Horizon Seeker, play... Bergstrider. I kind of want to save Bergstrider for tapping down a creature when I'm going to attack the next turn. So I think I play Horizon Seeker Basalt Ravager or Horizon Seeker Behold the Multiverse. And we actually want them to try to attack here as long as it's not going to lethal us. 
Do some extra damage for Tell the Behold. No, don't draw any more creatures, opponent, please. We definitely want them to keep attacking with Mistwalker until the turn it would lethal us. Down to 20. Another land. Do I still have like a slumber mound? I do still have a slumber mound, so I shouldn't play this yet. I should behold first. Spirit and bind, we want both of those. Actually probably save bind as well for tapping down a blocker. Play spirits. Draw a land out. I could bind a monster, or... Do I start attacking with Ice Hide Troll now? I think I do. I actually attack with an Ice Hide Troll here, because that can kill one of their blockers or push in for damage. I guess they block with Old Growth Troll, and then they can bring that back. Yeah. I am leaving myself with not the greatest blockers ever, but I need to I need to be pushing towards winning this game or I'm going to mill out. So I just don't have more win conditions. I just have more creatures. Like weak creatures in this deck that I'm trying to hit. So, I mean, that worked out well that I didn't have to um, pay the mana into that. We'll make a manalith then. Now I could bind Mistwalker, but I think I'm good to take five from it. Guardian Gladewalker, okay. Throw it on Mistwalker, so they're all in on the Mistwalker. Yeah, I guess Ice Hide Troll eventually will kill them if I keep attacking with just that. So that actually is our win condition. We can just bind the monster on Mistwalker. We don't have to hit Doomscar Titan and go really wide. Kin Seekers should theoretically be scrying here. I think we Kin Seekers go for the, the scry and then bind the monster Mistwalker while they don't have the mana to pump it more. Glittering Frost, I don't want. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. I have enough to use Svela here instead of Berg Strider, but or instead of Bind, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But I don't have enough mana to Bind and use Svela, so I Bind Mistwalker. Still, kind of want to hold Berg Strider for the turn I hit Doomscar Titan, or if they just draw another Mistwalker, just attack with Ice Hide Troll again, block with Glade Walker. We can slowly but surely start shredding their, their blockers away, hopefully fast enough to uh, to get there. At least fast enough to make Doomscar lethal. Oh, good lord. This is the last way I would have wanted to lose my game that could have hit Mythic after, uh, after losing the arena open to Coma. I, uh, Absolutely despise that card more than anything in the set now. So that's pretty on flavor. Because now they just get a Serpent and tap down Troll every turn. We're just never getting in. Oh. Rootless you. I can cast that and I have 8 mana left. So I can cast this and cast something else off Svela. I should have waited combat here. I could also attack with Troll. They can force me to spend the mana into it by just blocking Troll with Coma and then giving Coma Indestructible. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven attackers as well. I think Coma just gets us here. We had to be more aggressive earlier. <sighs> A 
the only card left to hit off of Svela is Doomscar Titan anyway, so I kind of have to just kill a Serpent. Oh, well, that works too. Now I don't have to spend as much mana in, which means I could afford Bergstrider. Can sacrifice to tap something else down now. I already don't have the mana to do that anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But I could play a Manolith now instead of playing Burge Strider. They're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 blockers. Thanks to Koma again, I'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I guess, 9 attackers? 5, 6, 7. If they block all my biggest stuff, two things get in. So Frost Augur gets in for two, and like Horizon Seeker gets in for four. Can't really crack through that, unless I have some way to get flying in this deck, which I don't. I do have a Masked Vandal, but that doesn't do anything here. I have Seize the Spoils, Glittering Frost, Masked Vandal, and Doom Scar Titan left in this deck. Just have nothing to get rid of Coma. There isn't really anything we could have to get rid of Coma anyway. Let's... I guess resolve that Bergstrider on Coma. Hope to just immediately draw Doomscar Titan and have that somehow be lethal. But I just generally don't think it is. This is a real sad one here. Doom, Scar, Titan, let's go. Oh my god, they get two more blockers, not even just one more. Why can't I cast this? Oh, I don't have another card in my hand. Because it played a land. Yeah, it, it just really doesn't matter, even if we hit Doom, Scar, because they get double serpents. Uh, I'm just going to scoop them up. I don't want to play that anymore. There's no way out of coma. Oh, so close. One win for Mythic there. I think we definitely should have pushed the aggro earlier there, since we did end up playing against a deck with a coma in it, but I didn't know that there was a coma in that deck. I was hoping we could just get there over time. But also, we were going to end up milling ourselves if we didn't push aggro, so definitely have not played with those uh, those troll warriors that often, the ice hide trolls. So now that I play with the more and I realize they can actually just attack in and just chip away one creature at a time. So we definitely should be attacking with those more, more often than I have before. So still learning the format for sure, still learning the deck types that I haven't really played. As you can see, like five color snow with Svela leading the charge. So we might've been able to win that one hit Mythic here, but even getting to just two wins away from Mythic is pretty nice really high up in diamond tier one so hopefully we can hit mythic tomorrow but that is going to end today's draft video i hope you all enjoyed and i will see you again for some more magic arena content um i guess tomorrow isn't a draft tomorrow is friday night magic um but yeah i'll see you for tomorrow's friday night magic and then on saturday we've got the uh, mythic invitational let me go ahead and claim my prize and show that not the actual the the qualifier weekend for the mythic invitational or whatever um but that'll be standard, so that'll be really weird. You get to see a, a limited-only player just fumbling around in standard. I don't even know what the standard decks are, so that should be interesting. That should be interesting on Saturday. But uh, after that, we'll be right back to the regularly, regularly, regularly scheduled drafts. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you again tomorrow.